Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems, Principles and Technology of Interoperable Health IT, Lecture A. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. Number one, name and define types of interoperability. Number two, explain the complexities of semantic harmonization and the benefits of using standards. Number three, Describe and contrast intra- and inter-organizational interoperability. And number four, identify and discuss common types of tools and technologies used to solve health interoperability problems. In this lecture, we will be covering the definitions and levels of interoperability. You will be able to define the types of interoperability and explain semantic harmonization's complexities as well as the benefits of using standards. Interoperability could be defined as having three levels, foundational, structural, and semantic. The first level is foundational. Foundational interoperability allows data exchange from one information technology system to be received by another, but it does not require the ability for the receiving information technology system to interpret the data. One could also describe, quote, foundational interoperability, unquote, as, quote, lower level interoperability, unquote. And a very important part of this is to ensure reliable communication. Both systems must have a way to reliably communicate data. There is a model called the ISO-OSI model of communications. Lower level interoperability is about the first six levels of that model. However, the ISO-OSI model is outside the scope of this lecture. For more information on this model, please refer to Component 9. A transmission should not be considered complete unless the receiving system acknowledges receipt. The next level up is structural interoperability. Structural interoperability is an immediate level that defines a structure or format of data exchange. It ensures that data exchange between information technology systems can be interpreted at the data field level. Finally, we have semantic interoperability. This provides interoperability at the highest level, which is the ability of two or more systems to exchange information and understand the information being exchanged. It takes advantage not just of the data structure, but also the codification of the data, including terminology so the receiving information technology system can interpret that data. This diagram summarizes the three levels of interoperability and each of their primary characteristics. Foundational interoperability is about data exchange in its basic form. Structural interoperability is about the structure and format of the data so that data could be interpreted. Semantic interoperability is the ability for systems to interpret data that are exchanged. As discussed, semantic interoperability is the highest level of interoperability. However, achieving it is difficult without standards because you must first do a semantic harmonization. Semantic harmonization means harmonizing definitions of what concepts mean between all parties in the exchange. You might also be interested in an article entitled, quote, User-Centered Semantic Harmonization, a Case Study, unquote, by Dr. Chungwa Wang and colleagues, which discusses how difficult this process is. Let's go over an example of how challenging semantic harmonization could be. We have system A and system B. Imagine system A wants to send system B demographic information. How would you map the demographics? Imagine system A has patient name, degree of professional certification, age, gender, native language, marital status, patient ID, social security number, and ethnicity. Imagine system B has person first name, person last name, person name suffix, person role, date of birth, sex, preferred language, medical record number, alternate ID, and significant other indicator. How would you map the demographics? Semantic interoperability is surprisingly difficult. Most likely, different people came up with different solutions to the problem. Maybe you found you had additional questions about the meaning of each field on each system. In the end, perhaps you would agree that there isn't a good map between system A and system B. And we were only talking about two systems with less than a dozen fields each. 
Imagine how semantic harmonization and interoperability would work with more systems and data types. Imagine the work required to communicate between only four typical hospital systems, a patient administration system, an EHR, a laboratory information system, and a clinical data warehouse. In reality, a large hospital might have many more interfaces to send results to and various departments to obtain orders from. Let's start with the patient administration system. This system would send patient data to the EHR, the lab, and the clinical data warehouse. Then you would want to send the laboratory orders from the EHR to both the clinical data warehouse and the laboratory system. The laboratory system would send its results to the clinical data warehouse as well as the EHR. The patient administration system would receive charges from the laboratory information system. It also may receive charges from the EHR. The events that might happen are registration of a patient order of a laboratory test, generation of its lab test result, and generation of a charge for the lab test. Look at how many arrows end up on the picture. And this is just four systems. You see, the more interfaces and the more data fields exchanged, the harder the problem gets. And it gets really hard, really fast. Here is a quote that relates to interoperability in general, and not just between healthcare systems. Quote, if there is one interface between every system in an application portfolio, and n is the number of applications in the portfolio, then there will be approximately n minus 1 squared over two interface connections, unquote. So what we've got here is an exponential problem. If we do interoperability without standards, we're not going to be able to solve the problem if we try to do it between any large number of systems. But there is a way to simplify the problem from exponential to linear, and that is to map to standards. So the problem is conducting conversation between every two interface points, and the solution is to map to data and terminology standards. Standards are going to be discussed in other lectures in this component, as well as in Component 9. Mapping to standards is sometimes called the hub-and-spoke solution. Without standards, you have point-to-point, -point, which means you need semantic harmonization between every single system. And this picture is only showing six systems. And you'll see that there are quite a few arrows already, and that's only six systems. The growth in complexity is exponential. In the hub-and-spoke solution, each system maps to a common standard format, which is in the center of this picture. There are only five arrows for five systems. As you add systems in an interoperability problem where all systems map to standard, the growth in complexity is linear. Now, how do you actually achieve interoperability between two parties, two departments, two providers, etc.? The first thing, and this is really fundamental, is that both parties need health IT. A reason why meaningful use is so important is that it got health IT into so many doctors' offices and hospitals. Both systems also need to have compatible functionality so that they collect and display congruent information. This is the reason for certified terminology, to ensure that workflow and data collected in systems can align. Now, you need to actually be able to get the information into the systems and out of the systems. They both need to have interface capabilities. They need the ability to send and receive information. At the basic level, you need to communicate the information as freeform information, unstructured text, human readable text, as long as it is something that you can get out of the system. The next level is to communicate in a machine processable manner, which is structured and discrete. And then finally, you want to be at a level where you really have semantic interoperability, where the meaning of the information exchanged is understood. An alternate solution for interoperability would be to share the same system. Then you would not have to connect systems at all. But you might find that the same interoperability problems could exist because two different parts of a system might have different functionality and might not interoperate as well as you would expect. In the ideal case, the information is structured and coded in every system using the same standard format and meaning. 
then you would not need to even map to a standard. For example, imagine communicating lab results in a Health Information Exchange, or HIE. In the worst case, every hospital sends the HIE its local codes, and the HIE must harmonize all the local lab codes. In the median case, each system maps local codes to LOINC and sends LOINC codes. But in the best case, each system uses LOINC codes directly as an identifier for their lab tests. The best case is not always possible, since it needs to be implemented when systems are first designed. Also, sometimes there is a good reason to have local, non-standard structure or coding. For example, LOINC does not provide a unique code that describes a kind of result that is done using a specific piece of equipment, but labs need to be able to know this difference. Clearly, there is a case for standards. The benefit of using standards is significant. Standard organizations are the ones that do the hard work of semantic harmonization. Don't underestimate that work because otherwise we cannot do this at scale. And then also remember that many standards are not plug and play. This means that standards often allow for variances in implementations, such as providing fields that are optional or rules with flexibility that must be agreed to at implementation time. Therefore, an amount of harmonization is still required at each implementation. Standards are covered in Unit 5 of this component, as well as in Component 9. Standard implementation is discussed further in Unit 6 of this component. This concludes Lecture A of Principles and Technology of Interoperable Health IT. In this lecture, we defined the levels of interoperability, explored the complexity of semantic harmonization, and explained the need for standards. To summarize, there are three levels of interoperability, foundational, structural, and semantic. To achieve semantic interoperability, the highest level of interoperability, you need semantic harmonization, which is harmonizing definitions of what concepts mean between all parties in the exchange. As the number of connected systems increase, the amount of semantic harmonization grows exponentially. Standards reduce the harmonization required, thus making large-scale interoperability feasible.